All right, for a while now, I've been wanting to make a video on the uh, on the topic of water management systems, like an internal drainage system, and how they affect radon levels, and especially from a mitigation standpoint, how they can uh, cause some challenges. I've been wanting to make a video about that topic for a little while, and just haven't really had a good opportunity to until now. Um, I'm actually finishing up with an inspection. This house, um, it has a water management system. They have a French drain and sump pump system. It goes around the entire footprint of this basement. Now I'm in an unfinished area. Um, there are two unfinished areas in this basement and then they've got a large finished area with um, paneling and drywall up. The system does run behind the paneling and drywall. I preface, uh, preface what I'm going to talk about with that because we're going to look at this drainage system and I'm going to show you some challenges that you've got in terms of uh, how this system affects indoor radon levels and you can take that and you can apply it to the areas that are finished and the areas that we can't get to to correct the problem with now the reason obviously the reason that they have a water management system is like I said obviously they've had a water issue and basically what these systems are it's a French drain that goes down into the concrete they bust the concrete up they put a French drain into the concrete and then it has a, uh, a grate or like a, a trough system above that but water that comes through the foundation wall or uh, that comes up around the footing will go into this drain pipe. That drain pipe is gravity fed into a sump pump and then the sump pump shoots the water out. So conceptually we're talking about water that makes its way underneath the slab. We catch it, funnel it to a pump and then shoot it out. These are actually the um, the drain pipes for the sump pump. That's the drain pipe that's going outside. Now I'm going to show you what this system looks like this is where they cut the concrete i'm going to get my other light you can see where they cut the concrete along that foundation wall and there is a drain pipe that's underneath that this gray plastic and i call it a grate you can see that there is a gap behind that that goes up against the foundation wall but you can clearly see that you can stick your hands down behind that in some spots like over here you can actually look down and you can see the dirt down in underneath that. Now, if we're talking about radon, sorry, not really set up lighting here. If we're talking about radon and mitigating radon, we have to create negative pressure below the slab. When we do that, uh, or how we do that, is we drill a hole into the slab, we put a pipe inside of that hole, take the pipe outside and attach a fan to it. We create suction below the slab. So currently, if we step back and look at this drainage system, those gaps around the slab, they're letting radon come out. And actually, I went ahead and put a test device over here. This one is currently reading at 6.11 picocuries per liter. It has been up to about 10 picocuries per liter at its peak. That is not a formal two-day short-term test. This is just checking hot spots. I wanted to do this to kind of drive the theory home. That monitor has read from 10.1, and I think its lowest that it was was at 5.73. It's taking a reading every five minutes. So I'm just getting quick readings just to see what it's doing. So if we think about that, radon is coming up around that slab, and it's coming into the house, and that's obviously we'd have to, we would have to seal that off to stop the radon from coming in. Now, going back to the radon mitigation, if we create negative pressure below the slab, even if this drainage system is not here, any cracks that are in the slab, any gaps, any openings, we have to seal up. Because if we don't, we're going to, A, not only allow radon to come out, but we're also going to, if there's an activated radon mitigation system, we're going to pull the conditioned air from the house into the slab and then through our system and out. We create negative pressure under the slab, so we have to seal it off so it doesn't create that negative pressure or allow negative pressure to come into the house. With these drainage systems, actually, let me show you one more thing, too. So if you go out here... This is their return vent coming into the HVAC system. So think about that radon that we just saw coming out. It's coming out through this gap um, in that drainage system. We have a return vent right there. So any concentrated levels of radon are getting sucked up into our HVAC unit. And then from there, pumped straight into the house. So this drainage system that's allowing high levels of radon to come out 
that's how the air can get interchanged with the house really, really quickly. And we can even get high radon levels up on the, the main level and the upstairs very fast because it's stuck sucked straight into the HVAC unit. Now, to put the mitigation system in, like I said, we have to go to seal up the slab we have to be delicate with um, the fact that you have a water management system that in theory what it's supposed to do is any water that makes its way through the wall should travel down through that grate down into the drainage system and out through the pump, sump pump. If we block that off by sealing, say with spray foam along the top of it, um, if we block that off, we could A, either void a warranty for a system, or B, you could cause a water intrusion issue. If you block off what's supposed, supposed to be there to allow draining, if you block that off, then all of a sudden the water entry is no longer being addressed. Sure, we can block off the radon from coming in um, at the cost or at the expense of <laughs> allowing the water to make its way onto the floor system. So there's no easy answer for how to, uh, to solve these. This video isn't necessarily about ways to correct it. There are ways and there's ways that you can work around it, um, but they're, they're very um, specific. You have to get into the details of what we're looking to achieve, what conditions are there, you know, do you have water that's penetrating through the wall or are we looking at water that's just getting around the footing? How much water's coming in? What have we done on the outside to address water intrusion? And have we slowed it down enough to where if we do seal off the system, is it going to um, affect anything positively, positively or negatively? So again, I'm not really getting into uh, the details on what, um, what the repair would be or what the alteration would be. That's gonna be unique for each house. This is more about, let's look at this and just understand that these water management systems are good, but we have to, it, there's a counterbalance with it too. We have to look at how they're working and what are they affecting negatively if we have this type of open gap around the slab. So let me know if you have any questions. We'll talk soon.